Hello everybody and welcome to another Transformers third party review. Thanks to the guys over at Robot Kingdom. We're taking a slightly earlier look at the latest offering from Unique Toys. This is their Peru Kill, aka kind of a movie masterpiece version of Lockdown. Taking a look at his accessories first, the largest of the accessories is a steel jaw. Still not a fan of uh, the fact they used steel jaws name for that but hey it's a giant wolf-like bot uh, it's actually a very nice sculpt very close to what we got with the movie got some nice sharp teeth in there we've got a ball mounted head so we've got a lot of range in there we've got ball mounted legs we've got a bend at the elbow we've got ball mounted paws and the same goes with the rear here. We've got a ball mount there, another bend at the leg and ball mounted feet. We do have a peg here, so we can install the next accessory, which is Lockdown's huge rifle, uh, kind of his head accessory. Just pop these pieces here back. I can bring that on. That's just gonna tab in onto the top and then steel jaw can wield that huge rifle let's just put him through the back and actually take a look at this rifle it's really nice indeed uh, this is die cast this peg here we've got some nice kind of coppery ammunition we've got a claw accessory which can be stored either on the gun or actually becomes part of lockdown's hand and this has got some nice heft to it i love this kind of silver trim going on here it's a very good likeness from the movie coming around to the ammunition this is kind of a grenade ammunition uh, this one doesn't open up unfortunately they kind of opened up in the movie didn't they and they kind of had that bluey glow to them but again nicely detailed and very true to the movie we get lockdown's submersible mask that's what he's wearing when he comes out of that swampland again very nicely done it just pegs in to the front of the face uh, unfortunately we do not get a spark extractor I thought that was something they may have included with this set, considering it's one of the first weapons that he uses to kill Ratchet. It's kind of like the, ooh, lockdown means business, doesn't he? Uh, but I'm sure kind of a Dr. Wu or somebody similar will give us one of those without a shadow of a doubt. And here we have lockdown himself. What a gorgeous alt mode. This is of course the Lamborghini uh, Ventador and it looks pretty darn good I think the bonnet is slightly too wide uh, to be an exact match but don't quote me on that but we've got the nice clear lights at the front got a lovely grill on there we do have rubber tires I love the fact you can see the brake discs it's not a flat color either. It's kind of got a metallic fleck to it. Very close again to the movie counterparts. You can really see those kind of brake discs and drums on there. Everything spins really nicely as well. Now, please bear in mind this is a pre production sample that was sent out to Robot Kingdom. So the final product may vary slightly. Uh, this has got a few scratches and bumps on it uh, where it's been manhandled by several people but I think this is pretty much what we're going to expect from the final release I don't think they're going to change anything at this sort of stage uh, but obviously yours shouldn't come with some scratches <laughs> and bumps uh, we have a slight split in the end here where it doesn't quite peg in as cleanly as it should and look at those tail lights just this is simply 
a thing of beauty. Uh, a lot of people have said they love how this looks. And at the same time, when you get him transformed up into his robot mode, he doesn't look like he should be able to transform into anything. He looks like a proper kind of biomechanical machine. You, you wouldn't expect it to transform. <laughs> now we do have uh, some movement here on the side mirrors. You can move those in and out. And of course we do roll. He rolls very smoothly. Uh, taking a look at the underside, the exposure of bot mode there is extremely minimal. Everything is tucked away. We can mount the gun. That never happened in the movie. But at the same time, it does look acceptable. Now, size-wise, he's not massively bigger than this oversized KO that we got uh, a couple of years ago now, wasn't it? Uh, but levels of detailing and levels of realism are just mind-boggling. This is just an oversized version of the one that Hasbro and Sakara had to offer, and it is shell-tastic. Uh, it is pretty much the definition of a shell former. And this, this is honestly a thing of beauty. But looking at these both, we can see what I mean about the slightly wider front that this offers, as opposed to, uh, well, this is kind of a very good looking alt mode, very realistic. Uh, but yes, you can see this is slightly slimmer, uh, but that's me nitpicking. I mean, this fell apart. <laughs> In comparison, this is definitely a masterpiece movie figure. Now, scale-wise, I think these look incredible together. This is the oversized Wei Zhang version of Hound, and this is the oversized Kuben Bell AD31. Uh, figures that I think are more in keeping with that masterpiece scale, but I think this, this whole aesthetic looks incredible. And whilst we're on the subject of masterpieces, uh, as you can see, <laughs> there's a slight difference in scale. Uh, wow, the Lamborghini has really changed, doesn't it? They always try to come out with kind of a childhood dream, kind of wall poster version of a vehicle, and they just get better looking uh, as they go on. They always try to improve the looks. I think Lamborghini, one of the only companies that successfully do this, their cars just get better and better each year. They just look amazing and here we have him alongside mpm bumblebee i think that's a pretty good uh, match for size i'm not entirely sure of the exact measurements for the official uh, lamborghini but uh, this guy i mean that's a pretty pretty good look i think and we have the revenge of the fallen prime as opposed to the mpm prime just because the vehicle mode has a uh, longer wheel access and in my opinion is a better scale ratio uh, than the MPM but the MPM bot mode is better so it's potato patata but yes I think this is a very well engineered precision transformer now as gorgeous as this alt mode looks he does in fact transform so to start off let's bend these wing mirrors into the side and come around to the rear here and you're going to pull this piece across I want to push this section out from the underside and if you just apply pressure to the back here just want to pull this piece away from this clip bring this piece out this here is going to come down this piece is ball mounted and just separates rotates around and comes to the front of this shin and then we can bring this piece down, bring this around, and then tab those in together, bring this heel spur up, and then come to the front of the toe and just bring this piece up like so. The rear section is attached by two pegs, so we just want to bring this down, and that allows the legs to be freed up you see those were the two tabs just on the underside there we can rotate 
these legs around. And then you want to push this joint backwards, five clicks. So we go one, two, three, four, five. There we go. Now we're at the front. We can bring this part of the leg down and then the knee joint just sinks in to the back of the leg. Moving up to the crotch. Again, this is tabbed in at two locations. Give that a little tug, we'll bring this down. We can slide this down to the crotch. And these two tabs here, the arms are actually held in by these. Uh, they're kind of spring loaded. You then want to come around to the rear and just giving that a little push, we then bring all of this section up. Bring these arms up. This roof hinge actually pulls and separates out. Bring this piece up and under, pushing it all the way in until it locks into place. Come to the front bumper, untab this. Again, this is going to rock up and it's going to push and sit down on the base of the front of the vehicle. This piece is going to fold up like this. And then this is some sort of origami kind of folding magic. This is going to come all the way up and using this double hinge here, there's this hole in the back, there's this peg. We're going to bring this all the way up and that is going to tab in. Bring these window sections up to the side and we're going to bring this torso down and these are going to tab into the base with a nice solid click and then you can bring these side pieces down and they're just going to tab in to these holes on the crotch and for those of you wondering yes there is die cast in here so he does have a fair bit of heft the upper torso these are just lightly pegged in with kind of a retaining tab just here you want to untab this push this hinge joint so we bring it all the way back until it clicks into place and then lift this piece here you want to lift this hinge this piece here is going to poke through and that now gives us enough room to bring lockdown's face through that gap and we can then bring this piece down and again we're using these tabs and they're going to tab in on that piece of the chest like that and bring these pieces across filling in any of these gaps the arms can come down we lift this piece up unfold this hinge rotate the elbow and in doing so we can release this little tab here which will tab into the underside of this section come to the hands unfold them all the way out give them a little rotation flick the thumb upwards he says and then bend those fingers down this piece comes outwards and rocks up to the side and then this piece here is brought upwards and last but not least push and secure this piece into place which being spring loaded will pop that chest section out there we go there we have age of extinction lockdown aka unique toys Terrakill. They have done an amazing job. And here we have him fully transformed up. And a small disclaimer, if my transformation steps are slightly inaccurate, that's because it's a pre-production sample and we don't get provided with the instructions. We just have to kind of work our way through them, trying to figure them out as we go. This was actually a little bit more simple than what I feared it was going to be, uh, but at the same time, still thoroughly enjoyable. And I mean, look, at that bot mode and here he is with a steel jaw now i'm hoping that they also sell these steel jaw separately as well or if somebody doesn't want theirs feel free to send it over to me obviously i don't mind paying but i'd like uh, two or three of these at least but lockdown looks incredible that transformation is black magic well figuratively speaking there we have the face sculpt it's a very close likeness to lockdown i actually had a chat with mark ryan quite recently at TF Nation. He's the guy that voices Lockdown in the movie. Uh, 
which is kind of surreal that I'm now holding a action figure which is basically identical to the uh, movie version. I just need a uh, mark to voice over the video. <laughs> so Mark, if you're watching, yeah, yeah, I need some voice clips. <laughs> as gorgeous as that face sculpt is, uh, we can remove it just by prying this piece off. It's just held on by a single peg. Just give it a wiggle and there it comes off. Now we have the kind of submersible mask, which can just tab in there. This is how we see him when he kind of pops his head up through the water. Again, that's a very good likeness. And just taking a look at the rest of the detailing on that body, we've got some lovely battle damage going on on that chest. It's kind of a champagne gunmetal color, isn't it? And you've got really nice, vibrant blue there. We've got the reflective sections on the crotch, we've got some highlighted pistons. Okay, you've got some coppery pistons on there and down to the feet. Now, some of you won't like these wing mirrors being part of the foot. Now, there is an option for those. We can just pull those out, come up to the rear of the shoulder, slide those away, storing those behind those rockets. It's entirely up to yourself. I don't mind having them on the feet, but it's nice to have an option to store those up there. Let's take a look at the articulation. Now the head can look up and down quite nicely. Left and right is somewhat hindered by his chins in both forms. Obviously we bring it up. Again, there's no real range there at all. Uh, it is probably one of the most hindered joints lockdown has. We have the arms that can come up to the sides and down. We can go forwards and backwards. These are all on friction joints. We have a double jointed elbow. We have no upper bicep rotation. We do have a rotation on the wrist and we have two joints on the fingers, although they are all pinned together. And we do have a ball mounted thumb. Now we don't exactly have a waist joint per se, but if we just look underneath this flap here, the lower section where the legs are attached is actually below the waist but that does in fact move we do have this die cast butt skirt uh, you'd think it would hinder the legs but these sections of the legs are actually spring loaded uh, so there's a lot of movement in there and they don't get in the way at all we can come forwards this much we can go backwards again using this hip skirt and this spring loaded thigh we can go all the way back we can come out to the side not a great range of motion out to the side, uh, but it still goes out nonetheless. We do get an upper thigh rotation in there. The only thing I think this is really lacking is ratchet joints. These are all friction joints. I know it's because there's a lot of folding uh, as part of the transformation. It must have been easier just to incorporate a friction joint as opposed to ratchets. Uh, at the end of the day, it looks incredible, so I will let that slip. <laughs> the legs, we do have that ratchet in the upper leg. This section does like to pop up. You have to kind of hold that down and then bend the leg up to make full use of that joint. But you know, it's a fairly deep knee bend. You just have to play around with these, sliding them in and out. The feet can of course pivot to the left and the right and we can go up and down quite nicely. And the heel spur can come up or down. But again, looking at the toes, uh, I think I'm gonna move both the mirrors up. I think it does look better, but of course we will have people screaming that that's pass forming and the worst toy ever. Just taking a look at lockdowns back. I love this spine section going all the way down. That's lovely detailing. As you see, we've got these different tabs on here. We can actually bring in his gun and using one of these tabs, we can just slide the gun on to his back. I mean, that looks freaking awesome, doesn't it? <laughs> That's nice that it's stored. Alternatively, you can just move the claw and that can just come in and peg in to the back like so. Or we can bring this around grab the fists, open those up, bend this in and around like this. And then we can bring in the claw section and then just slide that in. And there we have a nice weapon, kind of a blade 
Is it a claw or a blade? It, it's a weapon nonetheless, but there we go. It's now mounted nicely on his arm. Moving that, going back to the fist, bringing the thumb up, folding those fingers in. Let's mount that massive great gun on his head. <laughs> this piece here comes up, this comes down, this folds flat, and there's a tab just inside here. Now you'd think, how on earth does that get into the tab on the back of his head? Well, the answer is this again is spring loaded. So we can bring this up, slide that on, and there we go, there we have it on his head. And you can then just tilt that forwards, bring this piston section in and slide that into that back support. And there we have a huge gun head. <laughs> It's ridiculous. I don't know why Lockdown ever decided to have a gun head. Obviously, the head doesn't transform into the giant gun. It is an accessory, but nonetheless, it does look freaking awesome. And I mean, that is on there remarkably well. And with an alt mode as good as his is, I honestly wasn't expecting it to be as flexible and as poseable as he is. Now, he's not without his faults. Uh, with it being friction joints on those legs, they do tend to shift a fair bit. I suppose I could always get around that by putting uh, something on the base of his feet just to stop them sliding around. But unfortunately, that is the sacrifice you have to take when you don't include ratchet joints. Here he is alongside the oversized KO. Uh, <laughs> uh, he knocks it out of the water, doesn't he? Here he is with MP10. Little bit of a cross-universe action there. And here we have him alongside NPM Optimus Prime. I really do think that this Peregil is easily on par with the NPM figures. I think he's very in keeping. They've scaled him remarkably well. They've definitely thought about this up and coming line. We're gonna be getting more figures. We are getting a number of Decepticons as well. I know G Creation are jumping on the movie bandwagon as well. And they're giving us a masterpiece movie style Grimlock. Uh, I think this is definitely a very good bandwagon to be jumping on and Unique Toys giving us their first offering in their movie series. It is outstanding. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, a slightly earlier look at Unique Toys Parakill. I honestly can say that this could well be a contender for the best third-party figure of the year. The transformation is very fluid. It's smooth. Everything goes where it should without any resistance there's no clearance issues and the overall effect is a very good bot mode and a gorgeous alt mode thanks again to robot kingdom for allowing me to review this early sample i've included a link in the description below to where this is for sale on the robot kingdom store and until next time from myself and lockdown uh, thanks for watching ah goodbye